Today, the topic is I'm woken up. Shouldn't everybody wake up too? The traditional growing up experience is one where you are born helpless, barely can, can't even focus your eyes, can't put a thought together, and you start to slowly get your physical abilities trained, and you start to get your mental abilities trained, and you start to get a concept of the world that helps you to make sense of it. So you go to school, and you get taught things from your teachers, and your professors, and your parents, and you get socialized, and you become a very functional entity in this system. And then something happens to many of us. Sometimes it's a midlife crisis, sometimes it's an acid trip, sometimes it's a Peruvian jungle. But we go, wait a minute. I just assumed that this is the way things are. Maybe things are different. And if you're really lucky, you really wake up and you realize that the way things are doesn't have to be the way they are. And the way you perceive things and the way that you, the, 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 the goals that you have may not even apply to you. And there's this incredible freedom to that. And so one of the things that often that leads to is this connection with love and the importance of love and how all these measuring sticks and all these ways of deciding if we're successful in life start to pale once you start to think about in terms of love and connection and gifting and gratitude. So something happens very soon after that, which is the first time you help someone else to kind of start to wake up. Maybe it's a good friend of yours, someone you've known a long time, maybe it's, who knows, but it's somebody that goes, I was dark, now I'm light, oh my gosh. You, and that feeling is so awesome to help somebody wake up, to help somebody light up. That it kind of, we almost, it's like it becomes our drug. And so, Many people I know go through this process of kind of waking up and then going, everybody else, you gotta wake up, you gotta wake up, you gotta wake up. And I did this too. I think that it's a very normal thing. If, if everyone's eating rotten slop, you get an, find out a place where you, there's just this sweet, awesome food right over here. You want to make sure that everybody knows about it and everybody has a taste of it. But it's not so simple. And everybody's on their own timeline. And, and you never know if your idea of what is delicious is delicious to other people. And you never know if the way that you found your way to that restaurant is the way that they will find their way to the restaurant. And there's a, an arrogance that can be mistook for generosity. You, know, you want to give this gift to people, but there's this, there's a lack of recognition that actually this gift, this awakening that you have, you just started a lifelong path. And that while there's nothing wrong with saying, I am on an amazing path, it's very different than saying, let me show you a map. And I think the people that are on paths for long, long times recognize that they are strong. They, they, we are all finding our way. And anytime we tell someone else how to find their way, we put ourselves into a very elite realm of teachers. Most teachers worth following are not gonna call themselves that kind of teacher. Other people might call them that kind of teacher. And I don't necessarily even think it's a bad thing. You know, it's more, here's, here's where it become a bad thing. 
you start to think that you've got the right answer. And by all the ways that you can think of reality, your answer is preferable. Your delicious treat is preferable to the slop that you are eating and that so many people that you know have been eating and you've been taught to eat. But you making the assumption of what's best for others is contrary to the wisdom of, of, that, of, of that new wisdom, which is a humility, a recognition that there is this oneness, that there is this, um, that your mind, your, the way that you've tried to think your way through the world up until now is, is so limited compared to a surrendering, to a, a cosmic wisdom, things like that. I don't know, you could phrase it in a different way or maybe experience it in a different way. And if you feel like you're right, then you've created a category of people who are wrong. And now you're wrong again. Once you have categorized other people as not being where they should be or being wrong or having, you know, that's not your place. So I had a, a, a big wake up call with this one time long ago. I, uh, when I was in my I know what's best phase, I took my dad down to Costa Rica on a trip. And I had this whole plan about how I was going to kind of like, you know, kind of steer the conversation in a way that, that, that I could get it to where I wanted it to go so I could help wake him up. And we found this super secluded beach, just him and I walking down, nobody around, sound of ocean, beautiful sand, beautiful sun. And then after there was a stillness between us, I said, Dad, what is it you really want? What do you really want out of life, Dad? And he thought about it. There was pretty long silence as we walked for a while. And then he said, more of the same. And I went, uh, wait a minute, my worldview needs you to be wrong. How can I fix your problems? How can I give you this gift of my wisdom if you don't want it and you are fine and happy and you love your life and your wife and your family and your job and... Oh, if you want more of the same, then you win. I so often think of a seeker as being this high state, but actually a seeker is, is someone who, who, I would say, if you're there, if you're happy, the need to be a seeker actually is pretty minimal. Granted, uh, it is person to person, so many factors, etc. but that experience was a huge wake up call for me. Like, oh, I, don't know what's best for everybody. Now, I got a little older, and then I started to feel like, wait a minute, who the fuck am I? You know, I've been part of, you know, I read the Marianne Williamson quote, and it became like my gospel. It was, uh, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate, our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your plain small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that others won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It is not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. And so I quite brightly shone my light and I wore more pink than I do now and got on top of the speakers and whenever I could and 
And there was a part of me that really nagged me feeling like, well, you don't have it all figured out. You have really tough times sometimes. Who are you to like say, I know. And being called a fraud was actually one of the things that stung me so hard when I, when uh, the first time, the second time, the third time someone called me a fraud. And, and I actually really struggled with the idea of who am I to say, listen to me. After, after going through this period where I, I was doing listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, and then I was like, wait a minute, who am I? Uh, if I'm really a, 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 a student, if I'm really a servant, then who am I to do that? At the same time, I loved being the pink haired guy on the speaker. So I was in conflict and I actually had a shamanic experience, deep meditation, um, where I had a download that from the universe, from God, that addressed this and said, look, man, you're thinking about this wrong. You are not in charge of painting the cosmic painting. That's my role. I'm God. I paint the painting of the cosmos. You are the paint. And God needs every type of color, every hue and vibrancy and tone and tint. And your job is to be your color. Just be the paint. Be the paint. And it was in that awakening epiphany, download, message, that I was like, oh, bright. The painting needs bright spots of pink in it. I just need to play that role in integrity and allow myself to play that role in the grand drama. Not write the script necessarily, but play the role. So if I'm called to be that flamboyant person, do so. But it was still really hard for me in certain settings, especially in like promoting or sales and things like that. And then I, I heard a, a video by Marie, Marie Forleo, who uh, Belicious is really into. And the message was, you know, it was all marketing talk. And there's a part of me that just bristles up and tries to like, eh, in sales, sales. But I, over time, I've become much more at peace with sales because sales is problem solving. Sales is gifting. If you have a solution to someone's problem, you're not selling them. You're gifting them a solution to their problem. And if you don't feel that way about the thing that you are selling, then yeah, it's smarmy and you're trying to convince people. That's the difference between like advertising as far as letting people know about something and marketing manipulation where you're actually trying to convince people and change their behaviors, um, maybe not, you know, trick them almost. So anyway, this Marie Forleo video was kind of saying, look, if you have something to say, going to that humble, oh, who am I to speak mode, you know, to the, that, that actually, you are shunning your responsibility. It's not that you are like you're avoiding being a jerk by doing that. On the contrary, in the grand scheme, you are being a jerk because you are robbing this message or this vibration from those that resonate with it. There are people out there, maybe it's one, maybe it's a hundred, maybe it's a million people that when they come in contact with your art, with your expression, whatever that is, when they come in contact with it, they will go, oh yeah, cool, I'm so glad that I was found this. The story of the internet is really a story of that, of people like finding, 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 connecting, connecting, and the magic that that can happen. So if you deny that, if you say, I'm gonna turn down my volume, so, because I don't, who am I to speak, then there, you're, you're making it so there are people out there who would be benefited greatly by connecting with you will never do so. 
And so I'm trying to balance that, that humility with that responsibility. And as I get older and I humbly receive compliments at times and, and recognize the role that I play sometimes, it, sometimes it's just like mentioning a link to Byron Katie and someone goes, oh my gosh, that changed my life. Like, okay, me too. And so changing Playing the role that you're supposed to play, being the paint, is important. I think the trick comes when you start to feel the responsibility. You start to imagine what the painting is. You start to feel what is the outcome. How am I supposed to wake these people up? Who am I supposed to wake up? How many of them? Because then you slip out of the paint mode into the painter. When I reread the Marion Williamson quote now, I go, oh, I got, I got hung up on the wrong things. It's not just be, you know, spread, you know, spread your light everywhere, make sure everybody gets lit up. You know, it's, it's about shining your light. A kid playing in the sandbox isn't trying to drag you into their their world. Some might actually, I mean, that's a bad example. But the joyous part is that they are simply doing what they are called to do in that moment, that their presentness, they are being the paint. And it's that, as we let our own light shine, that's different than shining our light onto people. As we let our own light shine, as we be the paint, see these subtle differences that make all the difference? And then you can put all the the weight of your efforts and align it with the momentum of how you are called and then you can be of service no matter how vibrantly or quietly that service looks in the world. Some weeks in Hug Nation, especially lately, I've been a little quiet, not feeling like I've got much light to shine. Today, a little brighter. Hopefully your world is filled with people allowing their lights to shine. And hopefully you are that light for people. People doesn't need to be an auditorium, doesn't need to be a full yoga class. People can be the person who is taking your order, the kid, who comes home from school, your shining light changes the world. So do you need to wake people up? You don't need to do anything. You just need to shine your light and it will wake them up in perfect timing, just like an open window as you're sleeping. The universe doesn't grab you by the shoulder and start shaking you. The universe just lets the room get brighter and brighter and brighter until it's time. Thank you. I love you. Thank you for shining your light. Let's have a hug. Grab yourself by the shoulders. Mm. Oh, and this body, this incredible body that sometimes we take for granted. It has so much working at all times. The occasional pain or ache is a, such a gift to remind us of the perfection of everything else. And this body, this physical thing, is just the outside, the shell that houses our personalities, our identities, our roles, the labels. No, those are just the second level of shell that lets us go play the game sometimes makes it gets us in the headspace of what we need to do in the world and when we're playing the game we do have these roles that we need to do but when it gets too stressful remind yourself that that's just another shell and beneath that shell is who you really are that's the light that needs to shine that's the light that's already shining that we just need to let out. Not worrying about how bright it is, not worrying about what color it is, not worrying about who sees it, just allowing it to shine 
and getting out of the way enough to feel the warmth and appreciate the path that illuminates in front of us. If we are in integrity aligned with love and present, that light will shine and illuminate the path for others. It will inspire others, the right people, the right time. Let's take three breaths together. Ready? On behalf of Grandpa Caleb and all love warriors, happy Hug Nation. Thank you. I love you. Namaste.